It's not your fault you don't have good ideas. In fact, everyone has good ideas. They just don't have the right tools to work with. Lucky for you, in this video, I will be going over how to use this AI tool to assist in my design or workflow and to help you never run out of ideas again. Fabry AI provides an infinite canvas that allows you to organize text, images, and videos in one space using tools like Stable Diffusion, ChatGPT, and Midjourney. Fabry's whiteboard interface allows your creativity to run wild, but in an organized way. Fabry also gives you the ability to choose from various whiteboard templates to jumpstart your design. Later in the video, I will show you my favorite Fabry AI tool that can turn your sketches, images, and 3D models into high quality, realistic renderings in less than 30 seconds. This is my design workflow with Fabry. I'm currently working on a cafe and boutique hotel in Kutlery, Switzerland. I'm gathering research on this board to come back to later to help me influence some of my design decisions. This project is in association with the Camille Bloke Chocolate Factory. I'm using the digital board structure of Fabry to organize all the information and give me a place to have everything I need. Additionally, I included some images of the existing factory, visitor center, and some of the company's different chocolate bars for inspiration. Using Fabry Write, I used AI to write the history of Camille Bloke. Using ChatGPT technology, all you have to do is type in a prompt and it generates paragraphs of relevant information. I'm new to chocolate making, so I created a mind map of different steps in the chocolate making process using this AI tool. Using the toolbar to the left, you can find tools to annotate, take notes, and assist you in other ways. From there, I started to create ideas and test some styles in Midjourney. I really like this, taking the idea of these pipes connecting multiple volumes of space. I'll make note of that later to come back to. I added a few more images for reference where I found key elements I felt like I could implement into my design. I also imported some examples of Swiss architecture in order to have a good idea of the key design features they have in common, and that are significant. Now that I have some ideas in my mind to reference, I wanted to use the Fabry text image tool that uses Stable Diffusion AI to generate images from a text prompt. This means that prompts help you achieve better results and higher quality the better they are. I wanted to combine the ideas of Swiss architecture and leverage some of the programs of the building. I did another set of images, and these are the results. I just wanted to compare the different spatial conditions and materials. Once you have generated images, you are able to individually select them on their own to edit. You're able to remove the background, reverse engineer the image to produce text, increase the resolution to 2K and 4K, and the ability to render and refine the images. Both tools I will go over later in the video. But for now, I will only go to remove the sky for this image. Next, I selected the second image to render it. it showcases the Swiss Alps in the background, and I represented that style that is appealing to me. Rendering this will open up Fabry Imagine, which is run by Stable Diffusion, and can be used to run Fabry. It allows you to turn sketches, photos, and 3D models into realistic, high-quality renders. You can give it a text prompt, change the style of concept, and add up to five style effects. For now, I won't change a lot, and we'll keep it pretty simple in the architecture design style, but you can mess around with the advanced settings, but I won't get into the weeds in this video. Fabry AI does a great job of keeping the original form of the image, and the style has been altered based on the prompt provided. Next, I drew a sketch in my notebook that I uploaded and wanted to turn my sketch into a realistic image. I decided to add the mid-journey and modern architecture, but I wasn't really happy with the results, so I turned down the strength of both in hopes that it would achieve a better result. Then I brought an image of a Swiss chalet into the board so that I could reference that style but transform the program and the environment around the image. Fabry made it super easy to import the files and gave me a space to see everything on one organized platform. So far, I've been impressed with the accuracy of Fabry. So let's test it out again using the prompt contemporary exterior perspective of a Swiss cafe with snow and people in the foreground. Wow, it certainly did not disappoint again, and I'm digging the style it produced and it definitely fits the vibe and direction I'm looking to go with this project. And this also reminds me that you can easily download these images from Fabry to your computer. In addition, you can crop photos and edit their shape. To set up Fabry and Midjourney, you will first have to join their Discord, or you can add the bot to your own server. Next, you will type in forward slash bind to connect your Discord and Fabry accounts. This workflow allows you to collect multiple Midjourney generations and prompts in one location. It gives you the ability to continue editing those images with Fabry Imagine. Now I will show you how to seamlessly import your Midjourney images into Fabry. 
I generated these images to represent pipes as a form in space, ornamental elements, subtractive volumes, and functional components. All you need to do is type in forward slash collect, and this fabric icon should come up in the chat. From there, you will enter the amount of images that you want to collect, then right click on the images and collect them to the Fabry dashboard. If it's not working, make sure you have joined the Fabry Discord to connect your Midjourney server to your Discord chat. Let's go back to Fabry, click on the file transfer hub. This is where all the files that you've downloaded or collected will be stored uh, from various platforms and you just drag them into the dashboard. To import images from Pinterest, Google, and other websites, you need to download the Fabry Chrome extension. This add-on will allow you to screen capture, save URLs, and save images directly to your Fabry account. I was looking for images that had contrasting volumes and materials. I was drawn to this image and I clipped it by right-clicking and saving to Fabry. Easy as that. If I really wanted to go crazy with saving images, I could, but I wanted to keep this video straight to the point for you guys. So I went ahead and rendered this image in a different style. I like the form and the accent details, but the original did not fit the Swiss architecture that I had in mind. And so that's why I re-rendered it. And this is how they compare to the original. Next, I started my research of precedence for this project. For this, I sorted through many options that could provide a valuable information and design elements that I could take away and incorporate. The two that stood out were Heatherwick Studio's Grain Silo project and Renzo Piano's Central Papadou. I brought the images onto the board layout and used AI to generate similar images, as well as providing a brief description of the projects. For the Grain Silo, I used Fabry Write to give me strengths and weaknesses of the project. For the Grain Silo project, I liked this interior a lot. The shot through the corridor into a grander space. I saw this as an opportunity to transform this into an exterior cafe or lobby for the boutique hotel. I switched to the main style interior architecture to optimize the results. These renderings are super cool. The texture quality and the worn detail stood out to me, as well as how the vertical light silos drove in light to the space. I wanted to dive into the site analysis and program massing of the building. I dragged in a PDF of the site plan from an open file, easy transition between the two. Using mind map feature, I wanted to create a programmatic diagram, laying out some of the spaces and ideas for what should be included in this building. It broke it down into a very large chart, definitely giving me some options to choose from. From there, I was still trying to figure out the best way to combine program of the cafe and the boutique hotel. Using the brainstorm feature, I allowed AI to find some creative ways to combine the two main spaces. There were 10 ideas. I liked the third where it suggested to create a boutique hotel with a cafe amenities included in the room. And from there, I was able to visualize how this could potentially look by right clicking and using the text to image feature to produce some more images that embodied the qualities described in the prompt. I went through the same process with a few more of the ideas, especially the one with the garden roof. Using the site plan, I wanted to go over some of the annotation features that make it easy to collab with your team on projects. Now that I have a general idea of the style I'm going for with the project and what the program will be hosted within the structure, my next step is to locate the best building footprint on the site. Coolery is in a valley between two major mountain ranges in Switzerland. The views are a top priority in the design and will be one of the focuses driving the form. In the end of the production, the site has a large footprint across the street from the massive chocolate factory. It is also across the street from the main train stop into the city, so a prime location for circulation. Behind the site is a river, so it'll be key to keep the outdoor environment clean and tranquil. Where the current parking lot is seems to be in the way, so I want to move it somewhere else, an unofficial relocation to the left. I just generally created annotations, but it won't be the prettiest at the moment, but I'm doing them to show off the useful tools in Fabry, and in hopes that this video will be easy to understand by all. In Fabry, multiple team members can work on a project at the same time. You can make comments, tags, and other things, as well as write notes to them. Everyone in the dashboard has the ability to edit and create and annotate. Using the pen tool, I'm going to quickly sketch out program massing, giving me some more vertical elements and context. This will give me a 3D visual of what I'm trying to do before I go into section. I'm drawing a quick section to just figure out the sequencing of circulation from the train station, the cafe, and boutique hotel. I see this as an opportunity to go under the street. The chocolate factory had a bridge connecting over the road to the visitor center, and it didn't go over well. In addition, going under brings the idea of these pipes and how they can figuratively represent the circulation that the pedestrians will take. Fabria is also a great place to work on construction drawings. 
It allows you the ability to drag in multiple pages of a PDF, make annotations and edits, the work as a team. And one of my team members decided to interrupt this video with a kind note of the project. One of the final features I will go over in Fabry is the ability to take screenshots of your 3D model and bring them in to Fabry. You can render them and it's super easy. You just give it a prompt, give it a couple styles, and the Fabry Imagine tool allows you to render an amazing wintry aerial scene of the chocolate factory. Last but not least, I wanted to share the inpainting tool Fabry has introduced. Once you have rendered an image, you can re-upload it and switch over to refine in the top left corner of the pop-up. This allows you to draw over certain areas that you want to replace or edit. You will use a prompt to make the changes to that area with AI. It will only affect the painted portion of the image and the rest will stay the same. One cool thing you can still do in Fabry is create an image from a collage of images. I went to Google to collect some PNGs to create an interior scene and import them into the Fabry. Now some images might still need their background removed, like this plant for instance. I tried to remove it, but it didn't work. So the key is to increase the size of the image if it wasn't working, then try again. Now you can see it worked this time and now it fits perfectly within the scene. The next step is to select all the images together, right click, copy as a PNG, then paste onto the board right next to it. Now that this is one PNG, not a bunch of separate images, you can now render it and I'll let you be the judge, but personally, I think it did a great job of piecing together all these elements into one cohesive image. Now that you know how to use Fabry, it gives you a great opportunity to share your work with others, whether you're presenting a project to a client or sharing it with your team. Fabry allows you to easily and effectively create presentations. You can drag over images and write text assisted by AI, and this will allow you to create the best presentation boards. I'm quickly going to mock up a presentation board of the work I've just created in this video as an example of how to do it. Obviously, you need to put a little bit more thought into the context, the text, and the images, and whatever else is going on the board. But this shows how easy Fabry makes it. If your presentation requires multiple slides, you can open up the frame tool and start adding as many slides as you want. The easiest way to do it is drag these frames over the existing boards that we have created. From there, you're still able to organize the slides and go to full screen mode to present and switch between the slides. So not only is Fabry great for creating work, but sharing it too. That is why I'm sharing this tool with you guys. If you click the link in the description, you'll have access to the same free program that I do, allowing multiple users to collaborate on projects and can be a designer's best friend if used correctly. Feel free to always come back to this video for tips or reach out to me if you have comments or any questions. Thank you guys for watching and welcome to the grind.